Hallelujah. We welcome you to the online church. Hallelujah. The Back to Basic online church. It's different. It's different. It's not church as usual. The online church is the new frontier, ladies and gentlemen. The new frontier. It's the online church. Praise God. Amen. I want to encourage each of you, whether you're listening live or whether you're listening to, by the recording, whether you're in the USA or England or Kenya or Brazil, get acquainted with the online church. The online church is going to be important in the next couple of years, ladies and gentlemen. The brick and mortar church is never going to be the same. And so I, I want to encourage those of you who are frustrated and paralyzed concerning the brick and mortar church, you can't get to church, find an online church. We invite you to uh, come be with us temporarily to, to uh, your church get, get its thing together. Hallelujah. We don't have all the answers, but we've got the answer. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm tickled. I'm tickled deep down in my sanctified soul because when we started the online church a little over seven years ago, people laughed at the pastor kind of, that ain't no church. That you know, the internet, that is no church. Ladies and gentlemen, now the online church is the is the is the hope for a lot of people. Uh, the hope. A lot of people reaching out, where can I find an online church? Where can I get the word of God? And uh, a lot of people are scrambling. If I can just hear God speaking, if I can hear a message that's going to encourage you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we praise God for the online church, and we thank God, we praise God for you. As I said before, we don't have all the answers, <clears throat> but we have the answer. And the answer is Jesus Christ. I want to give a shout out to Ryan Sogler, Melanie Bias, Ron Gaffin, Hey West, Marisol. Uh, good morning. Buena Dios, West and Marisol, Sam Dale. We give a shout out to all of the people. We give a shout out to Elijah, to, to Alpha, to all the people in Kenya. We give a shout out to Bishop Davis and all the people in the Caribbean. And we give a shout out to all of our people. Christina in Oklahoma, Christy Carpenter and Aaron in Idaho, Cheryl and uh, the Hawkins family in Ohio, Brian Whitaker in Ohio. We give a shout out to uh, uh, all the people in California. Praise God. My cousins in California. We give a shout out to people all over this nation and the world. Jesus Christ is Lord. We give a shout, shout out to the Shy Temple Fellowship here in Atlanta, Georgia. We thank God. What a mighty God we serve. You say, hey, you're yeah. kind of excited, Pastor Carter. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. I, I'd be excited, y'all. I'd be excited. Well, what you so excited about, Leroy Carter? I'm excited because the Lord woke me up this morning. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I think if God wakes me up, I, I can do something to help myself, too. I can praise him. I can worship him. I can get in touch with the Holy Spirit, see what God wants to do, and let him take the lead. And where he leads me, I will follow. Praise God. I hope that's your attitude. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. You even say, well, those who are watching, Pastor Carter, what, what's with that winter time uh, 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 horse collar around your neck? What's with that winter time turtle neck? Hey, y'all, look here. Look here. This is last on in Georgia. It's 95 degrees outside, but inside. This is Man. north to Alaska. North to Alaska. Mush, mush. On King, on ye huskies. On King. On you help you. It's like Alaska inside the house. Amen. Amen. It's, it's one of these things, ladies and gentlemen. Jackie's got to have it cool. I don't need it to be so cool. So it's one of those where you turn it up, you turn it down. One turns it up, one turns it down. But praise God. I had to dig deep. Plus, Kathy, I had to dig deep into the dresser drawer today to get this thing put on. 
great nation and the leadership and all nations around the world and our and our military as well. Lord, we ask you to give the strength and the courage and the wisdom to Pastor Carter to give us your beautiful word again today. And Lord, we want you to bless this online ministry and the people that's in it, and we hope more and more people every day come to you. And Lord, we, we want to give you all the glory, Lord, and, and we just love you, we praise you, we worship you, honor you, and glorify you in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ryan. We pray God for you and Tara and Jenna and ask God to continue to bless you guys and leading you. Praise God. Ryan's going to be ordained soon. And we thank God for Ryan's diligence, his patience, his trust in the Lord. And uh, Ryan has been such a blessing to us for many years. Hey, before we get uh, further into our message and... Um, get into our message and further into it, I want to encourage you, uh, and, and, and there are many of you who you heard from God, and God has made promises to you, and the promises have not come about yet. Come on, somebody say amen, or give me a, 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 yeah, a yes in the chat window. Uh, there are many of you who have heard from God, God made promises to you, but the promises have not just yet come about. Well, when God, I don't see any amen yet, but come on, somebody just unmute and say amen. Okay, God has made some promises to you. He hasn't, they haven't come about yet. And so 
when God speaks to you, it's called a faith vision. When he shows you what he wants to do, when he gives you a plan, it's called a faith vision. Or a vision. He will give you a faith vision. And then it's up to you. It's up to you to do something about it. And faith visions, when God promises, uh, we're going to talk in our message today about what he does with his promises. Because he cannot lie. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says God cannot lie and he will not lie. So when he makes a promise to you, you can expect adversity. You can expect difficulty. You may expect even sickness might come upon you, but something adverse will come upon you to try to keep you from getting God's blessing. And so uh, we, re we have released our new book this week on Amazon.com. It's called Faith Vision. Get a look at that, Faith Vision. Your pastor has written this book, Faith Vision. And on the back you see our, our logo, Pastor Carter with his arms up to God, just Step out to God, trust in God. You can get your copy of Faith Vision at Amazon, Amazon for $9.95. Ladies and gentlemen, you read this book and you will, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, or I'll send you your money back. You will never be the same again. This is the first time I've ever guaranteed a, 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 a reader to get something and I'll send you the money back if it doesn't change your life. Faith Vision. It talks about how God makes his promises and how in that second stage of, 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 of the process, Satan's going to come against you with everything he's got to try to discourage you. And a lot of people drop out of the race. They, get, they forget what God has promised, and they go into fear and doubt and unbelief. And many never realize what God promised them. It never takes place. But that does not make God a liar. Satan is a liar. And so uh, the third stage is the resurrection of the vision. Every faith vision has three stages. Get a copy of this book from Amazon. Get it today. Nine ninety five. Order today. You'll have it by Tuesday. And see what God will do for you with this book, Faith Visions. Praise God. Okay, turn with me, will you please, to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. And we will start with verse 13. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13. And we will read through verse 20. Hey, Wes, if you have that, if you've downloaded Hebrews chapter 6, I know you might be fixing breakfast. But if you have your Bible and you're able to read, would you read Hebrews chapter 13? I, I, I wish I could. I'm, I'm nowhere near a Bible, but um, I'm definitely listening. Okay, thank you, sir. Hey, love you, man. Thank you. And okay, you. let's get a reader. Let's get a Florence, a Sister Florence Gaffney, Coastville, Pennsylvania. Can you read this for us? Hebrews 6, 13 through 20. Is Florence still with us? I mean, I can grab it off the internet. Oh, yes, um, I'm here. Wait a minute. Well, I'll okay. step out for a minute. Wait a minute. I'm trying okay. to get it here. Florence is there, Wes. Thank you. Thank you, Florence. What, Hebrews 6? What chapter? Hebrews uh, 6. What verse? 13 Hebrews. through 20. 13? Okay. Hebrews chapter 6, 13 to 20. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, I hear an echo, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so far, and so after, he had patiently endured he obtained the promise, for men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein 
God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immu okay, what was that? Immuability mm -hmm. of his con of, of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was possible impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Okay, Melchizedek. I have Wonderful. prayed for you here. All right. Praise the Lord. With thank words. you, thank you, Sister Florence Cassidy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you for reading so wonderfully the Word of God for us. Hebrews chapter 6, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever, 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 Become discouraged. All right, amen. And you can't find your copy of Faith Vision. You can always go to Hebrews 6 and start with verse 13. Okay. And read uh -huh. the rest of that chapter. And God will restore his promise to you. He will not only restore it, but he gives you the courage and the faith and the hope to stick it out. You see, there are many people in the body of Christ, many people in the church who need to be encouraged. And many need to be to get some stick to itness. I mean some real, 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 real uh grits and gravy type. Uh 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 fat back, lay on my stomach and, and, and do something in my belly, so to say. Build some build some character inside of me. Many people are in the body of Christ, they're saved, but they don't have any backbone, any courage, or any endurance. And, 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 and the Bible says we should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. Our leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever we do shall flourish. And, and, and we should not let the winds dry up the way. Every wind of doctrine, Paul writes to the Corinthians, and, and he writes to the people and tells them, don't let every wind, every strange doctrine blow you off course. And one of the reasons why we, uh, the, the back to basic online church is thriving is because we have been steadfast, ladies and gentlemen. We have been steadfast since day one on the Word of God. God has told us to do this. He's backed us up. And we've been tempted, like a lot of other ministries, to go off, you know, selling products. Well, God has given me the permission to sell my books because I write. God gives me the books to write. And I mention these books. Uh, but we don't beg for money. So many ministries have been dissolved, have disintegrated, have lost their calling because they're greedy for money. The Bible... The Bible warns us against filthy lucre, uh, money, money, money. There are a lot of churches don't know what they're going to do now with the shutdowns, with the social distancing, and with the limiting of numbers of people who are allowed in their sanctuaries. They don't know what they're going to do now, and they're doing everything they can. They've got committees to try to call people, uh, having watch uh, parties and and, and online meetings so that make to make sure people get their tithes in. Uh, now they got somebody they go door to door and pick up the tithes for the church. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not about the money. Don't let your ministry be messed up because of the love for money. Okay, and so there are so many churches, so many believers, money, money, money. And so one of the all strong points, strong uh, pillars in this ministry is we're not greedy for money. We don't use gimmicks. 
We don't use raffles. We don't use uh, bingo. We don't uh, uh, sell, send people scratch off uh, to raise money. No, and we don't even ask for tithes and offerings in this ministry. I, I'm a true believer that if if you're really born again and God has given you an income and you know your Bible, then you ought to be tithing into a church. You ought to be giving your offerings to your local church, whether it's the local church or whether it's the online church. You ought to be tithing. So we don't beg for money. Well, how do you operate, Pastor Christ? We operate because God provides. He's Jehovah Jireh. Now, I could get on here and beg and beg and beg, put my phone number on there, and, and give my phone number, my email address, my website address, and ask for more money, and ask for this and that. But I refuse to do that. I refuse to beg. I'm not going to beg people who know what they're to do. And so, the ministry, this is our seventh or actually gone into our eighth year of online ministry. We're, God is using this ministry to reach people in nations where there are no church buildings. God is reaching people uh, who uh, ordinarily cannot hear the gospel. And he's doing it through the internet and through technology and uh, through the faithfulness of his servants who believe God. When God says he wants this done, God is going to make a way uh, to get it accomplished. And so we are witness here at the online church that God is faithful. He is faithful, and he will bring forth your faith vision. Whatever he put on your heart to do, he will do it. Hey, Wes, whatever God says you can do, you can do it. Sure, uh, Melanie, sure, Ryan, sure, Jackie, you're going to meet adversity. You're going to meet up against opposition. There are forces out there who want to prevent you from accomplishing what God has promised you to do. And we're seeing this in America and the world, in every nation. This coronavirus ain't playing. Ladies and gentlemen, this coronavirus ain't no joke. And this coronavirus uh, has caused a lot of people to give up hope. A lot of people have caved in. Churches have had to close down. Restaurants cannot do business. Businesses have declared bankruptcy. People who have lost jobs. Millions are in the unemployment ranks because of this coronavirus. And this is just the first wave, ladies and gentlemen, of, of, of opponents coming down the road, of opposition coming down the road. And so God's people need to know, hey, I need to dig in. This is war. This is a battle. And then look at the scripture. The Bible tells us, in uh, First Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 10, verses 3 to 5, we, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing captive every thought obedient to Christ. And then Ephesians chapter 6 tell us, let us know that we're, we're not fighting people. We're not fighting against our flesh and blood. That this is spiritual warfare. Ladies and gentlemen, the coronavirus, uh, even though it is attacking people's bodies and many people are dying, this is spiritual warfare. The, 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 uh, it, the enemy is not people. The enemy is not the Chinese. The enemy is not Washington, D.C. The enemy is not India. The enemy is not Italy. The enemy is Satan himself. The enemy is powers and principalities, ruler spirits, spiritual wickedness <clears throat> in heavenly places, whom I truly believe have used a group of people to develop a virus that has never been seen before in this world. Sound like a uh, 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 one of our leaders has said, it's never been seen, never, never been done before, but the enemy has, has chosen a group of people, and they have, 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 have uh, 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 developed a virus that can kill a nation, and it's happening. And, and you can't put your finger on the enemy. We're wrestling 
against powers and principalities and rulers of spirit. Satan is trying to take us all out. And in the meantime, he's causing confusion. So people are blaming the president. People are blaming the Republican Party. Republicans are blaming the Democrats. The Democrats are pointing their fingers at uh, uh, people south of the border. And, and some are pointing their fingers at blacks and blacks are pointing their fingers at whites. And so everybody's fighting against one another, and the enemy's just having a day, a field day. <clears throat> and the main thing is <clears throat> Satan is trying to destroy God's witness in this world. Wake up, church. Wake up, uh, uh, newscasters. There has not yet been a newscaster who's come on board on a major news channel and said, the Solution to this problem is repentance and returning to God for healing, salvation, and deliverance. That's the answer, ladies and gentlemen. That's the answer. And until uh, our leaders uh, start uh, uh, preaching that and living it, it's not about wearing masks to wear a mask or not to wear a mask. That sounds like Shakespeare. To be or not to be. Whether it's is nobler, no, it's not to wear a mask or not to wear a mask. That's just an insight. The, the thing is, are you going to believe God or are you going to believe Satan? Are you going to stick with God or are you going to run like many people in the church who are running trying to find a way to keep the church open? It ain't about keeping the church open, ladies and gentlemen. It's about, hey, whose report will you believe? If if Baal be God, then serve him. If Satan be God, then serve him. But if the Lord be God, then serve the Lord. And uh, that's the basic ministry we want to challenge you today. Make up your mind. Whose side are you going to be on? You don't have a lot of time, ladies and gentlemen, and neither do I. We don't have a lot of time to hem and haw and pick and choose and point fingers and, and play the, the blame game. Satan is trying to destroy us all. And so it behooves us. That's a way of saying it is necessary that we get saved and stay saved. Get in church and stay in church. And, and, and one thing this coronavirus is showing us, it ain't, ain't about that building you've been worshiping down on 3rd and Main Street. It ain't about that building you've been worshiping in the new uh, church ever she built in that field. No, no, no. The church it is the body of Jesus Christ. The uh, uh, that Christ dwells in us, the hope of glory. And Satan is trying his best to get, get people to turn from the living God, deny Christ as Lord of their lives, because Satan wants you to worship him. And so, so God says, if we give them some hope, and there are people listening today whether you're live or whether you're listening to the recording. You need some hope. You need, some of you are at the end of the rope. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been to the end of the rope many times. I've been to the end of the rope where there is no knot tied in the rope, nothing to get a grip on, and, and the rope begins to slip. Some of you have been there health-wise. Some of you have been there job-wise. Some of you have been there with your marriage. Some of you have been there two or three times with marriages. End of the road. If this don't work, ain't nothing going to work. You've been there. I've been there. Satan has beat us down on many occasions. He's done the beat down on you and me on many occasions. How many beat downs do you need to convince you that the only hope we have is in Jesus Christ? How many beatdowns do you need? How many more lies do we need to hear from Washington, D.C. until we realize that, hey, our only hope is in Christ Jesus? How many beatdowns do you need health-wise to cause you to say, you know, the only way I'm going to survive is to get Jesus in my life and to live for Jesus and trust God? How many more beatdowns do we need when we look in the mirror and we look at how sickness has uh, uh, deteriorated many of our bodies and, 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 and we're not the same and, and, and look like things ain't going to get better. How many more beat downs do you need to realize that the only hope I have is in Christ Jesus? 
ladies and gentlemen, we are living in the age of the great wake-up call. Wake up, folks. Wake up, folks. I love on Sunday mornings to play that song by Richard Smallwood and Vision, the healing song. I love that song. Uh, Richard Smallwood said, uh, the Lord gave me this song. And when I, when I heard it, I knew it was the healing song. He said he was miserable. He was beat down. But when God gave him that song, that word, that word healed him, and then he began to sing it in his choir, and people all over the world are still getting healed. And that song is over 20 years old, and people are still getting healed from it because God took a man and his choir and anointed them, and, and they decided they were not sing for money, perform or fashion. They were, they're not going to be performers like a lot of our choirs are, but they're going to minister. There's a difference between singing for money or singing to influence the crowd and ministering unto God's people in the Holy Spirit. And that basic ministry is a ministry. We minister to God's people in the Holy Spirit. We do things differently. We don't beg for money. We don't beat you down. We don't oppress you. We don't humiliate you. Uh, we don't talk about you behind your back. The love we show to you on camera is the love we have when the cameras are not on us concerning you. Uh, when, when we leave the ministry on Sunday, there's time. Jackie and I, we're praying for you. We're standing in the gap for you. Many times we get up at night and pray for you. We're, we might spend hours in prayer, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, praise God. Me in my wool shirt, uh, my heavy shirt and sweater, and she in her short sleeves. But even uh, whatever the climate is, we're praying for you. She's praying for her fellowship. And, and we stand before the Lord for you. That's the kind of church I want to belong to, where people love you just who, for who you are, not for what you can do for them, not for what you can buy from them, not for what you can bless them with, but because of you. Because God so loved the world, ladies and gentlemen, that he gave his only begotten son. But whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's a promise for, from God. So look at this scripture, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at our God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who called a man out of a rock. The rock was formerly called Ur of the Chaldees. He was a Chaldean. God called one man out of that pagan nation. They worshiped strange gods. And God called Abraham and revealed himself to Abraham and told Abraham who he was. And because Abraham had faith in God, it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, ladies and gentlemen, if you're willing to put your trust in the Lord, not in your mother and father, not in your brothers and sisters, not in your job, not in your money, not in your bank account, not in your education, not in your local church, not in uh, your government, but put your trust in the Lord. The Bible says, blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. And respect not the proud, nor such as turn aside the lies. Well, Abraham believed God. And the Bible says God counted it unto him for righteousness. God saved him right there and then on the spot because he believed in God. Now, salvation came at that time by faith and trust and belief in God. Jesus had not yet come on the scene. Abraham lived 1,400 years before Jesus came on the earth. And so until Jesus came on the earth, people got saved by being faithful to God, by believing in God and not wavering, not turning from their faith. And so the moment Abraham declared his trust in God, Abraham declared that God would be his God, and God declared that I will be your God, I will bless you, 
as far as your eyes can see. Abraham was a man 75 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm 77. Abraham had aches and pains in his body like I do. Abraham was uh, uh, sensitive to cold and heat, just like I am. Abraham had the same infirmities that you experienced. He was 75 years old. And Abraham was way past the age of production. Abraham had issues. And God said to him, as far as your eyes can see, I'm going to give this land to you. Abraham uh, didn't own a whole lot of property. But God promised him miles and miles of land. As far as your eyes can see, and as far as your eyes can see, I will give you more children than the sand of the sea. Count the number of sand on the sea. And count the number of, 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 of birds in the air and the stars in the sky. And that, that's how many children you have. And Abraham is there. Duh. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. My wife is fertile and, uh, and I'm too old. Ain't nothing happening. She's way past the time of life. But God spoke to him. And Abraham believed God. Ladies and gentlemen, get your copy of Faith Vision. Faith vision. And and those things God spoke to you and, and you forgot about and you think God has forgotten about. God has not forgotten his promise. Abraham believed God and that's the way he walked. For the rest of his days, Abraham walked with God. For almost 50 more years, he walked with God. He walked with God in believing God. Abraham saw miracle after miracle after miracle. Abraham saw himself revived. He saw felt virility come back into his body. He felt his energy return to him. Uh, uh, Abraham uh, fathered children. And then after his first wife, Sarai, Sarah died, Abraham married again and had six more children. By his second wife, he was over 100 years old when he fathered those children. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not impossible to see the things that God promised to do if we will trust in him. And that's where many of us are messing up now. We don't trust in God. Many of us, we've got to have our family's opinion. What do you think about this? We've got to have our spouse's opinion. Well, husband and wife ought to agree. If you don't agree, you've got to mess up households. We ought to trust our, our, our church family's opinion. But you know what? We found out, especially in, the Baptist, especially in the Baptist church, the vote does not necessarily mean it's the will of God. You can vote somebody in and vote them out. You can vote on the issue and you can uh, vote on the color of the carpet. What color are we going to uh, paint the walls of the church? And, and, and people have arguments over voting. They just tell it, it ain't about the vote in the church. It's about what's the will of God. Forget the vote. Seek God. Pray. Forget the vote. Even in your marriage. And you, you, you know you're not going to agree on, on uh, anything. So pray. Learn how to pray. Seek God. Turn that place down. Fast and pray until God speaks. And if you're the head of the household, then you've got to lead your household in the way that God says to. And many households don't thrive because... People surrender. Well, he doesn't agree with me. He doesn't agree with me. And so you take the second road, the road, the road of, 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 of second success, lower success. No, no, no. God's got a will for you. He's got a plan for you. Get faith vision to read it. He's got a plan for you. And stick with God. And when you give your life to Jesus, and ladies and gentlemen, this grieves me, and I want to share my grief. There are millions of people, hundreds of you listening to this uh, uh, recording. You confess Jesus as your Lord and you're saved. Well, that's as far as many of you have gotten. You confess God as your Savior, Jesus as your Savior, 
and you're saved according to scripture. But now your problem is walking by faith. The first wind that comes around, the first challenge, the first issue, freaks a lot of you out. You get freaked. Read the Bible and stop freaking. Read God's promises and lay hold to God and 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 and, and, and stop listening to the news and and, and 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 seeing what's happening in the world because the news will blow you off your feet. That is not the true report. There's fake news and there's real news. Sometimes you don't know what you're hearing, but the good news is in this Bible. And ladies and gentlemen, we have offered free Bible study to people all over the world. And people, I mean, if you give out free meals, you say, hey, uh, free vegetables, we're giving out free vegetables tomorrow. Or Saturday, we're giving out free veggies. Come to the church, get free vegetables. Oh, man, you, the place will be uh, 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 packed. Buku numbers of people will come out and get those vegetables. Or if you get some free meat from Tyson or from the chicken places, free free chicken, free ham, free bacon, everybody and their brother will be out there. I remember years ago, Florence Daphne, when we were kids, they gave out free blocks of cheese. The government gave out once a month, I think it was free blocks of cheese and a box of powdered milk. A free block of yellow cheese and a box of powdered milk and everybody, those lines were so full. I mean, hey, it wasn't just black folks in that line. A whole lot of white folks in that line. A whole lot of Hispanics in that line. Uh, uh, I mean, folks who, who never, never would say they were poor. Everybody was in line trying to get that free. So when you offer free stuff, people grab it. But in the church, ladies and gentlemen, We've got to learn how to walk with the Lord. And when adversity comes and you don't see the answer and the answer doesn't come, you've got to stay close to God, just like Abraham did. Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God to the point that they cut the covenant with one another. God and Abraham cut the covenant. Well, what does that mean, Pastor God? God told Abraham, get a certain number of animals, cut them, lay them piece by piece, Separate the birds from the other animals, put them on the altar, and wait for me. And God said, I'm going to walk through that sacrifice. The animals were the sacrifice. God cut a covenant with Abraham. God took an old man, 75 years old, from Iran, Iraq, Iraq. God took an old man from her the child. He said, I will be your God, and I will give you. More land than you can see. More children than you can ever count. More than the numbers of the stars in the skies and the sands of the sea. And this old 75-year-old man believed God and packed up his belongings with his wife and his nephew Lot. And they left that place to go. And they began walking to a place where God said, I will show you the place. You just start walking. Ladies and gentlemen, if you see a 75-year-old man doing that today and, and pack his wife up and his nephew and start walking across your nation, you'll say he has lost his mind. He'd be tripping, and they would lock him up, put him in a nursing home somewhere. So, ladies and gentlemen, everybody in a nursing home should not be in a nursing home. God still speaks to people. And Abraham believed God, and God was faithful to keep him. And that's the way it ought to be when you get saved. When you get saved, one of the problems, one of the problems that I have with, with this whole Christianity thing, and especially in America, you got so many voices that come and join my church or watch me on, on TVN or watch my show. And, and so many people, they get caught up. They confess Jesus. They get caught up. They see the mega church or they see a success. Success, because the mega church ain't going to tell you dilly squat about failures. All you see is the success symbol. So you got these big name pastors who, whom you think never went through adversity, but a lot of them have gone through adversity. 
T.D. Jakes one night woke up, his house was on fire. His feet was burning. Fire was coming out of his feet. Smoke was coming from his toes. His house was on fire, and his body was on fire. But you don't see that on the the, uh, the maggot church. All you see is people praising the Lord, everybody happy, and then you they advertise what they want you to purchase from them, and you think you're in church. But being in church, ladies and gentlemen, means you become a part of the body of Christ. God wants to cut the covenant with you. When God uh, cut the covenant with Abraham at a certain point, it was near midnight, and darkness covered the whole earth, and Abraham had the uh, sacrificial animals laid out on the altar, and Abraham kept chasing the crows and the buzzards uh, away from that sacrifice, and all of a sudden the Lord appeared as fire, ladies and gentlemen, and fire danced between those pieces of animals on that altar. God appeared in the form of fire and God danced through that sacrifice and burned up that sacrifice. And Abraham promised God that he would follow God all his days, no matter what. And that's what it means to be saved, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to promise God that we will follow him all of our days, regardless of what comes against us, whether it's a coronavirus or sickness, or bankruptcy, or unemployment, or cancer, or heart attack, or stroke, or whatever, that we have made a decision to follow Jesus. And if the church won't follow Jesus, or the people in my community won't follow Jesus, I'm going to follow Jesus. If my wife won't follow Jesus, I'm going to follow Jesus. If my children won't follow Jesus, I'm going to follow Jesus that nothing, 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 as we say, say in Chester, Pennsylvania, nothing will separate me from the love of Jesus Christ. Nothing. Nothing. And so we look at Hebrews, and it says, so when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, I will bless thee and multiply, blessing I will bless thee and multiplying I will multiply thee. God says, I promise I'll bless you, I will bless you. Uh, I promise I'll multiply you, I will multiply you. Even when this old man could not even father a baby, he was physically unable. God made it possible for him to father children in two marriages. He, after his first wife died, he got married again, and the second wife gave him six more children. And so, after he had patiently endured, verse 15, you need to circle verse 15, everybody. Hebrews 6, 15. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Faith vision. Get your copy at Amazon. After Abraham had patiently endured, the Bible says, you need patience. I need patience. Because Satan's coming, he will try everything he can to get you off course, to stop you from believing God. Satan got some of you off course that you can't even go to church two, two weeks straight, two weeks straight out of a month. The average American, ladies and gentlemen, according to the Gallup poll, the average American goes to church twice a month. That's when the churches were open. Well, I wonder what it is now. I wonder how many uh, Americans go attend an online church. First of all, God's got to work with the headset, with the mind of Americans. Let them know that the online church just might be the new frontier. Just might be where God's speaking to people. It just might be that he ain't speaking anymore through that brick and mortar church you've been spending all your money and all your time and all your effort, you know, buying new pews and new carpets and, and, and selling dinners on Saturday and, and this and that. Ladies and gentlemen, God is the God who wants to be worshipped. And I praise God for the online church because we present the word to you and give you the opportunity for the rest of the week you worship God. You walk in the strength of that word you've heard and you worship God. You put God to the test. You give him the praise. When troubles come, you praise God. You worship God. You don't quit on God. 
Okay, I know it's uh, here, it's after, a little bit after 12, so some of you got to go and switch on to your other online church. Ladies and gentlemen, stick with it. Get a church and stick with it. Like, uh, I noticed that after the, the hour of 12, people have got to turn on my other church, got to go somewhere else. It's here, ladies and gentlemen, a quick shop and quick church hop. Get where the word, at least get where you can hear the end of a message. The end might be the best part of the message. Just want to chastise some of you because uh, I don't like what you're doing. You need to get into a message and hear it and get all of it and apply it to your life. God is talking to you about being patient. God is talking to you about his promises. That God can't lie. Listen to this. For men barely swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all things. Verse 17, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an earth oath. So I'm saying, God means by that word, immutability, that his word cannot change. When God speaks of something, he ain't going to change his mind. He ain't going to change his word. What he said 1,400 years ago, Florence to Abraham, still stands for us today. In other words, God is immutable. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. In other words, you can trust God. God ain't shaky. God ain't crazy. You can depend on God. God is not like a, a Republican or a Democrat. They put on a different hat, depending on what audience they're working with. Uh, uh, they would say, wear masks one day and go to another crowd and say, don't wear masks. They want to cater to the, the, the whims of the people. But God is not like a... a, a, a a, a, a politician. God is God. What he speaks is truth and, and real and it's immutable. It cannot change. And so verse 18 that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who has fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. There are two things that God swore upon to show us that he's not a liar. One is his word. The word of God. Everything from Genesis to Revelation is the word of God. God will stand behind everything he says. He will not change. He will not back off. He won't change his word to accommodate you or to satisfy you. He won't change his word because the devil pops up and hits the world with the coronavirus. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He will not change his word. It's impossible for him to lie because he has sworn upon his word and his oath. His word and his oath. He made an oath. He cut the covenant with Abraham. He swore an oath to Abraham. I will be your God. You will be my child. And ladies and gentlemen, because, because of this, we have hope. The Bible says, verse 19, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters not into that within the veil, whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made in high priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek, where Abraham saw God cut the covenant, God in the form of the Holy Spirit, in the person of the Holy Spirit, in fire, danced and walked between the sacrificial pieces on that altar and burned up, consumed that altar. God proved to Abraham, I am not a liar. I will keep my word. And ladies and gentlemen, the Bible teaches us we have that same hope that Abraham had. Sure and steadfast. And, and that hope which entered into that within the veil. There was a veil in the temple. The veil separated the holy place where the priests gathered, where they made sacrifice, and the holy of holies where the Ark of the Covenant resided. There was a veil, a 60-foot long curtain, 
that separated the holy place from the holy of holies. The high priest was only allowed to go beyond that veil once a year to allow the fragrance, the aroma of the incense to fill that place and to sprinkle the blood on the altar to make atonement for the sins of the people once a year. If the high priest was unclean, he died in the holy place. And because he had a chain on his feet, they drug him by the chain from inside that veil out into the outer place. Ladies and gentlemen, Hebrews 6, 19 to 20 says, We have hope as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast, which entered into that within the veil. Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, he entered beyond the veil of the temple. The Bible says the veil of the temple was torn from the top to the bottom, meaning Jesus Christ entered into the holy place where his blood was deposited before God the blood of the sacrifice that purchased our redemption. And because of the blood of Jesus, God cannot lie. He's already sworn his oath. He's given up his, given up his word. And so the Bible tells us that we have hope. No matter what, whether we face a coronavirus, no matter whether we face financial problems, no matter whether we face starvation, war, pestilence, disease, no matter what comes against us, whether it's family strife, whether it's revolution, no matter what we face, God is sure. He's immutable. He cannot change. He will keep us. Why? Because we have confessed Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord, and we are anchored in him. He's our forerunner means he already went before us into the veil and deposited us in the bosom of his Father, that we are anchored in him. Our soul is anchored in the Lord. No storm, no pestilence, no revolution, no violence, nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. And so, years ago in the ancient days, when a ship was struggling at the sea, trying to get into the harbor, and the waves were billowing and beating, and it was impossible for that ship, that ship to get into its anchoring place in the harbor, men would take a long boat, and several men would get in that boat, with, and they would roll that boat. Before they would roll the boat, they would put the anchor of the ship in that boat. Listen to this. Visualize this. We're talking about the forerunner. These men were known as the forerunners. They would put the anchor of the ship in that boat and paddle that boat. Struggling against the sea, they would paddle that boat into the harbor where in the harbor there was a great rock of solid piece of rock and they would take that boat into the harbor and fix that anchor into that solid rock ladies and gentlemen they would make sure that anchor gripped the solid rock on the harbor and then they would signal the men on the ship at the sea lay hold heave lay hold heave lay hold Heave. In other words, grip that chain and pull it. Take up the slack. Lay hold. Heave. And before long, before long, they are pulling the ship into its harboring place on the harbor because the anchor has been fixed beyond the veil into that solid rock. And you and I don't have to worry about any storm that comes upon us whether it be cancer or hangnail, whether it be 
fever, blister, or, or, or stroke, whether it be a heart attack or a coronavirus, whether it be an attack against our finances, whether it be divorce, whether it be death, the Bible says, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing shall separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. Why? Because we have been anchored in Christ Jesus. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We have hope as an anchor for our soul. We have hope as an anchor for our soul. Will the coronavirus overtake you? Oh, no. I have hope. Well, uh, your, your reading say you got a temperature of 105 and you got a fever and this and that. Well, you know, to be absent from the body, hallelujah, is to be at home with the Lord. I'm in a win-win situation. But I know one thing, even if I die from the coronavirus, I will live forever in glory because the coronavirus cannot separate me from the love of Christ. I still love Jesus. I still will serve Jesus. I will not turn back. I will not cave in. I will not give up. Well, you know, your church has to shut down. That's all right. The church can shut down, but the church is in me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. You can't take Christ out of me. He died for me on the cross. I received him as my Savior and Lord. I've been born again by the Spirit of God. And praise God. I thank God, ladies and gentlemen, that I can declare today that tomorrow, July 20th, is the 51st anniversary of my salvation experience. 51 years ago tomorrow, God blessed me with the gift of salvation, and I refuse to let him go. I refuse to let him go. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Were you crazy, Leroy? God? Yes, I'm crazy. Crazy about you, Jesus, because only you could save me. And when nothing else could help me 51 years ago, you came all the way from heaven down to my lowly estate. You picked me up and turned me around, placed my feet on a solid rock, and I'll never be the same again. I don't ever want to be the same again. Whatever you have for me is all right with me. I'm going to trust in the Lord until I die. I declare that I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. He's my Savior, my Lord, my God, and my King. Though the storms be raging in my life, I have hope in Christ Jesus. And so do you. Praise God. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. We bless God for you. We praise God. He's so faithful. He's a mighty God. He's a wonderful God. Praise God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your message today. Bless your people today. Save those who will call upon you. Open the hearts of the people. Sanctify the foreskin of our flesh. Help the people to believe you, Lord God. We give to the hour. Then, Lord, give people the strength to continue to trust you in the name of Jesus. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen.